Good news, everyone! We're back with more fut- nope, that's not right. Bazinga, punks! And welcome back with more of the Big Bang Theory. This is Season 8, Episode 5. Last time, Stuart got money from Deb Deb to rebuild his comic book store. Howard was not happy about that. And then Emily and Penny wound up hating each other because Raj had to bring up the fact that he and Penny hooked up. But yeah, this time we have the focus attenuation. So somebody's losing focus or something, someone's getting distracted. Either way, it should be fun. Full reaction is going to be on Patreon. Leave a like and let's get started. Hey, I read that someone invented a way to convert your footsteps into electromagnetic energy so you can charge your cell phone while walking. Cool. We had that idea years ago. You thought of it September 22nd, 2007. Two days later, Penny moved in. And so much blood uh. rushed to your <laughs> genitals, your brain became a ghost town. Don't blame That's it on Penny. I remember it distinctly because I had just composed my annual poem commemorating the anniversary of Dr. Seuss's death. No one wants to hear it. Why die? <laughs> Why did he die? Excellent. Penny is not the reason I didn't pursue that idea. Since meeting her, what have been your greatest accomplishments? Easy. Sleeping with Penny. Getting Penny to go back out with him after she dumped him. Tricking Penny into getting engaged. Tricking. And a few weeks ago, he almost did a pull-up. Almost. Very nice. But did he have any accomplishments before he I met Penny? someone owes me an apology. I think we've all been distracted since the girls entered our lives. You distracted? Your lives are fuller. Oh. Hi. Hope you're having a good day. Who has time for this constant sexting? S sexting? Sexting? Maybe we have lost our Oh, focus. forget Sheldon. Kill us to get to. We could have one of those retreats. Like our own science retreat. My cousin has a cabin out in the woods. No, I'm cabin not in the woods? Cabin in the woods. Did you see the movie Cabin in the Woods? I actually did. I understand the reference. A hotel. a hotel? Did you see The Shining? I have not seen that. Okay, fine, then we'll just stay here and do it. Well, you didn't suggest a beach house. You would go to a beach house? No. Good lord, no. Have you seen Jaws? Um, no, I haven't, but I get the point. The guys and I are talking about having kind of a science retreat. Want to go to Vegas this weekend? Of course I do. <laughs> We're wow. Week in Vegas. You in? Hell yeah. Yes. Well, I'll check flights. I'll check okay. Hotels. I'll check my underpants. I'm so excited. I think I peed. TMI. And you will not be missed. They seem okay with it. <laughs> hey, I didn't think you'd make it. Why not? Because well, you have a steady girlfriend now, and we assumed you'd have to stay home to lower the food down to her in the pit. <laughs> Wow! Emily's working tonight. Yeah, one would assume on getting out of the pit. <laughs> it would have been fun to see her go with the okay, girls to Vegas. Focus. We're innovating. I feel like we're in the Facebook movie. Oh, I never saw that. Yeah, really? Oh, it's wonderful. And I swear I'm not saying that because Justin Timberlake is in it. He is? Spoilers, I guess. Yeah, not I really. Yeah, I have it on Blu-ray. I'll make the popcorn. Guys! <laughs> Leonard, keep them on, on task. In seconds, we went from let's change the world to let's watch TV. I'm sorry, is that a no? <laughs> I haven't looked at these in years. <laughs> Robot girlfriend. Mm, that was mine. <laughs> Robot prostitute. Wait. Also his. Why would you need both a robot girlfriend and a robot prostitute? To cheat on his robot girlfriend you with. don't do with your robot girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, damn. Boy, when you met Bernadette, the field of robotics really took a hit. <laughs> Okay, let's just skip all the inventions you can have sex with. Uh, how many pages of that do you have? Ergonomic heated seat cushion. No, it vibrates. Keep going. Cat says the sex thing. <laughs> let's just come up with something new. The future of the show in Back to the Future 2 is only a year away. A lot of things in that movie haven't been invented yet. How cool would it be if we could make one of those a reality? If we could figure out the scientific basis for Marty's hoverboard, yeah. that would have universal application. I have an idea. I think I have the same one. We gotta no. watch Back to the Future too. <laughs> oh my god. I'll make the popcorn. I'll make the popcorn. <laughs> There's a cover band in the lounge. Nah. But they play Barry Manilow. No. But they're called Fairly Manilow. <laughs> That's a pretty good band oh, name. Okay. No. no. I want to go downstairs, get a lose all your money. Dance until I vomit Ow. all over a roulette wheel and watch it go everywhere. <laughs> Yikes. What if we don't want to vomit? Oh, you will. That's why they give you the bucket. That's why they give you uh -oh. the bucket? What? what? They move my field right up to Monday. What does that mean? Oh. It means instead of having a week to study, I only have two days. That sucks. Oh, can you start and in the morning? While you're in Vegas. You know, let me do a little tonight and I'll catch up with you guys later. Look at her taking her job seriously. So, um, now that Penny's not coming... We're not seeing Fairly Man alone. Okay. <laughs> so what are we doing? We actually wound up watching the movie! 
In 2015, Biff steals the sports almanac and takes the time machine. So the 2015 he returns to would be a different 2015, not the 2015 that Marty and Doc were in. This is hot tub time machine all over again. Still, have, still don't know what that is. If future Biff goes back to 2015 so right after, it wasn't until his 21st birthday that 1955 Biff placed his first bet. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is placed right? What do you mean? Is place the right tense for something that would have happened in the future of a past that was a future? Oh my god! The we'll have high past past. Well, whatever. We'll have placed? <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> In oh my god. The alternate future he creates isn't the one in which Marty and Doc Brown ever used the time machine to travel to 2015. Therefore, in the new timeline, Marty and Doc never brought the time wait, machine. Wait, wait. Is brought right? Have will have Marty and Doc never had have had brought? Had have had brought? I don't know, you did it to me. <laughs> <laughs> The timeline in which 1955 Biff gets the almanac is also the timeline in which 1955 is Rogers eating never popcorn? gets the almanac and not just never gets. Never have, never hasn't, never had, have, hasn't. Great. Is right? <laughs> He's right. So what kind of name is Biff? Sounds like when you pop open a can of Pillsbury dough. Oh. Biff. Oh, that stuff is so good wrapped around cocktail weenies. Guys. Do you know that the word wiener comes from the German name of the Austrian uh. capital of Vienna? Or Wien. Do you know if you look at Austria on a map, it actually looks like a wiener? It does? We, we sent the girls away so we could focus. I don't think it worked. Mm -mm -mm. Wasn't their fault. Those are some big margarita glasses. Let's talk about us. What about We're us? looking good. Better than good. I mean, look at you. Your body's banging. Banging. Scientist to scientist, how big are those hadron colliders? Wow. I'll show you the divot in my spine. That's no, hot. It's okay, I was born with it. If you put a double A battery in there, it makes my leg kick. Okay. All right. Oh, this is already better. There are far fewer distractions in here. You'll this find a way. Is that condition to focus on work? If we could configure out a way to super cool the materials, we could utilize quantum coupling. Oh, I wonder if anyone's tried that. Go online and look it up. I can't uh. argue with him. It's right there on the screen. Austria does look like a wiener. <laughs> Go check out how hung Florida is. <laughs> <laughs> So distractible. Sure Mrs. What if we use some form of operant conditioning techniques to keep us from getting off topic? Like behavior Fun. modification? Yeah, exactly. And did you know those techniques were used to actually teach pigeons to play ping pong? That cannot be true. And we're looking it up. <laughs> hey, it was match point. They watched the whole set. Some psychologists perform operant conditioning with punishment. Maybe we can come up with a punishment for straying oh off boy. topic. You know, in medieval times, idle chatter was punished with a device called the Scold's Bridle. It's a, an iron cage that's locked around the head and pierces the tongue. Sounds too much. If only we had one. Housekeeping! So drunk. So, so drunk. <laughs> it was us the whole time! Yeah, she could tell. Why did you tell her it was working? Was it working? Yes. yes. Guess who won a hundred dollars playing craps? That's a dollar. Well, guess crap. who wildly overtipped a cocktail waitress? We found a place that has Australian male strippers. We want to see if they twirl their junk in the other direction. Is there a correct direction? Change into some flats before you... Topple right, over. I have a little more studying to do. Can you believe this nerd? <laughs> you know, nerd! You're being a loser, or do you want to watch me climb into an Australian man's G string like a baby kangaroo? <laughs> a big kangaroo. <laughs> uh. Guys, we'll help her study so she can get done quicker. I don't think here, you're going to be any you. help. I'm going to quiz you. I got your notes! If you want these, they're going to be at the strip club! <laughs> Did you get a chase her? To the walk-in closet, sure. <laughs> oh, man. Whenever someone takes us off topic, they get their arm hair yanked off. 
How long did this take? One benefit of quantum coupling. But you're gonna have to take it off at some point. Who decides if someone's gone off topic? Now, you, you, you. We'll take a vote. Also, if we're leaning towards quantum coupling, then we should. Ah, one! For revenge. You said quantum coupling. That made me think of the show Quantum Leap. That's a tangent, and it's your fault. Well, damn. Sheldon. That's a stupid idea. Negative reinforcement isn't working. I think you mean positive punishment. Negative reinforcement is the removal of a positive stimulus. It's a common mistake. Okay. Negative reinforcement is really wrong. It's used incorrectly all the time. Even pull, Bill Murray pull, makes pull, that mistake pull. in the first scene of Ghostbusters. Not Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> Not Bill Murray. We're studying the effect oh my God. of negative reinforcement. Jump ahead to the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. No! Yep, Leonard's right. We can't just jump ahead. We have to watch the oh my, movie. Oh my god. Oh my god. We saw Back to the Future 2, pigeons playing ping pong, a bunch of countries that look like genitals, and one guy whose genitals <laughs> look like Denmark. Wow. Yeah, sorry for clicking on that. He made everybody's day worse. It's late. We should stand here in my lab on a Saturday night and watch the rest of Ghostbusters on a crappy laptop. Yes, let's yeah. go home and watch it on TV. <laughs> Even Bernadette's not small enough to get, fit in there. We had some pretty hot corpses in my anatomy class, but none of them moved like that! <laughs> she took one look and went back to studying. Aw, oh, Penny. Oh boy. <laughs> her hand over her. You wanna go to the pool? Mm. No. Come on, you said it yourself. Only nerds and losers stay in the room. <laughs> Oh, oh, Penny. Please close the drapes. Okay. Bunk. <laughs> oh, Penny, Penny, Penny. I disagreed with the framing that Sheldon gives for why the guys haven't been productive in their field, and I'm glad this episode reinforced that, like, no, it wasn't the girl's fault. I mean, first, casting blame is not useful in this situation, especially since these are relationships that have added so much to their lives, and I'm curious exactly how many scientific breakthroughs they had before the girls entered their lives in the first place. And then seeing how they failed to get anything done this episode while the girls were in Vegas, yeah, whatever plans they had before, they just weren't getting done. And Leonard tried to keep them on task for so long, but the other guys just kept getting distracted, and then he would get dragged into it as well. They wound up watching Back to the Future 2 and debating all the time travel stuff with Biff. They mentioned Hot Tub Time Machine. Uh, not familiar with that film, I just know it was brought up in Avengers Endgame. And the whole tense thing was funny because Sheldon was trying to collect, correct Leonard, and then Leonard was trying to correct Sheldon without actually knowing what the correct tense was. Will have had brought- oh my god, it was wild. And yeah, they were trying to figure out how to make a hoverboard, but definitely not working out. Uh, they even tried, not negative reinforcement, but positive punishment. There was a flaw in their plan even before they were like pettily ripping them off each other though, because if they were successful in actually like buckling down and working, at the end of the day, the duct tape would still have to come off. They'd hurt themselves anyway. And yeah, they spent the rest of the night watching Ghostbusters too, just absolutely not productive at all. And yeah, happy that Penny is taking this job of hers seriously, because I've mentioned before that I really want her to feel like she's done something that she's proud of. Because regardless of her talent level, acting never put enough money on the table, and no one would ever confuse her with a capable waiter as well. So glad to see her apply herself, even if it m means missing out on some fun. And yeah, she knew if she partied with Amy and Bernadette that she'd be hung over the with them the next day and incapable of focusing on her studies. Shitty luck that it happened during their Vegas trip and that her job just moves up the timetable like that without any warning, but hey, at least Vegas isn't too far for them, they can just drive back at some point. I have been to Vegas twice, so the first time was not enough to explore at all. I was there for business for like a day and a half. The second time I was there for eight days and it was a lot of fun. Uh, my special friend and I at the time uh, heard people having sex very, very loudly a few doors down. No, we didn't hear like sex noises, we just heard them screaming, a woman yelling, oh my god, I'm coming, so freaking loud. I think we heard her on like three separate occasions just screaming, there, there are children on this floor, ma'am. Super, super funny though, good for her and good for her partner's ego, I guess. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh uh, yeah, Vegas. Uh, glad Amy and Bernadette had a good time, at least the first night. Um, giant margaritas, Amy talking about how Bernadette's body is banging, and coming back to the room uh, Penny was studying in, just so, so drunk, it was really comical to see them let loose. And this episode just reminded me that this life is very, very different than the one Amy had in the past. Glad she has friends like this now that she can let loose with. All right, that's gonna be it for this episode. Very entertaining. Full reactions on Patreon. We are four weeks ahead over there as well. Leave a like, and I'll see you guys soon with more. Bye, friends.